EA Sports coverage of the National Football League is on the air. Nothing like the fanfare of introductions to an NFL game, and that was in evidence a moment ago. Fireworks, pyrotechnics, you name it. This crowd is ready as their guys get set to match up between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Houston Texans. The calendar has turned to December, and we're in the home stretch now as we're underway in week 13. That'll be taken about a yard deep. The Texans take over first and 10 at their own 21 yard line. It's Kalen Balazs, and he is brought down at the 22 after a gain of two, and it brings up second down. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front, they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. From the 22, here's second and eight. Back to throw, Watson. Pressure comes, and the Steelers take him down. The 305-pound defensive end, Jarrell Casey, gets the sack. And, Charles, part of the reason they lost last week, they didn't have a single sack. Well, they changed that quickly. But did they ever? And it was something they talked about with us extensively. They needed to get pressure. How are they going to get to the quarterback? Obviously, they schemed themselves into a great play, didn't they? Throwing on third down, Watson. Looking left side, it's complete, he's got it. And he is gonna have a Texans first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. That's good for a Texan first down, a 12 yard pickup. Jet sweep. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. Chewing up big yardage. Another nice game there. This one goes for 20. An excellent run there coming from out wide. And we used to consider these jet sweeps to be gadget plays or something a little bit unusual, right? But now most teams have some version of this play in their playbook. And I think it's a lot because of the receivers that are being developed nowadays. These guys look like running backs, even though they're playing out on the perimeter. They run it with Balazs. And he was able to shed one tackle, but could not get away from there. T.J. Watt in on the tackle. A three yard Just not a whole lot of room to operate there on that carry. No, not at all. They did a really nice job staying in their proper places and not allowing any lanes to open up. Second down, Watson. He gets this to Devontae Adams. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 29-yard line. Give them 17 on the pickup there, and the Texans also get a new set of downs. Toss play to Balazs. 
shrugs him off. Stopped at the 24-yard line after a gain of five. He was well over 100 yards last week. He told us this week, a little ambitious, that he wants to hit that 200 mark. We'll see. Makes sense, though, doesn't it? Have we ever run into a running back that had a great game the week before that didn't think that's just going to naturally continue? Just make sure you feed me the football. And that's what they're all about. Continuity, rhythm, number of carries. Just keep giving it to him. Now Balazs. Oh, he sheds himself free. And he'll take this one in for a Texans touchdown. Kalen Balazs with touchdown number seven on the year. And the Texans take it all the way down the field and score on the opening drive. You have to imagine for a team that's lost three straight games, scoring first in this first quarter has to feel pretty good. That's feel great for them, and also it's a nice signal to the rest of the team. Because we talk about complimentary football all the time. So they've now signaled to the defense, now signaled to the kicking game. Hey, we're here to play in this one. We're going to do our part. Let's see if you guys will do the exact same, and we can break this losing streak. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. First and 10 at their own 29-yard line. carry now for Benny Snell and they'll wind up getting this to the 37 gain of nine they'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here and if it's a long play so be it but the main goal get a couple of first downs run some plays run some clock allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath settle down and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score the previous run good for nine here's second and a yard Now a nice throw here, right side, he hauls it in. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. That one good for 26 and a first down. First down, Steelers. Now they'll throw here, out of the gun. That is caught at the seven. And into the end zone. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. Chase Claypool, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Steelers are an extra point away Matt from Springer tying this thing up. It's up and good. So these teams match touchdowns here in the first quarter, and we're tied 7-7. Seven, seven. Each team's had it. Each team has scored 7-7 seven, seven here as the kick's away. Now this will make it into the end zone. The Texans take over first and 10 at their own 17-yard line. Texans offense ready to go here for their next drive. And it's a unit last drive that did it all on the ground, Charles. And they controlled it from the interior, big on big, right? Offensive lineman versus defensive lineman. But you know, in order to keep the football moving downfield, other people have to get involved as well. Your wide receivers, your tight ends, lead runners, anything that you have possible to get in front and keep the ball moving. And now the defense may be looking out for a pass coming up. Faking the give. Now Watson. He's going to sling this deep downfield. And that will be incomplete. Try to dial up the long one way out there, but it'll be third down. But they certainly came out firing in this one. And while that one was incomplete, I can't imagine that'll be the last shot that they take in this game. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. Out of the gun, Watson. Oh, trying to get that to Adams, but that's intercepted. The safety, Terrell Edmonds, picks it. And he brings this one back. It's a pick six 
for a Steeler touchdown. Well, it certainly looked to me like he tapped into the quarterback's thought process there. And what I'm hearing more and more when I go around the league, defenders sitting in on quarterback meetings trying to learn more about how they think so they can be in the right position to be in the right spot as he was there to pick that one off and take it all the way back for a touchdown. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And he will be brought down here inside the 20. Good coverage as he's dropped at the 17. 17 yard line. Houston's offense already at the line, set to get going. And they just had that pick six. I guess the only positive maybe of them returning that for a touchdown, this offense right back out onto the field to try to make up for it. I like that because now it doesn't give them a chance to go to the bench and really settle. You know, to sit there and kind of seethe over the idea that they turned the ball over previously. Right back out there. It's almost like hopping right back on the bike after falling over. See if they can get the ball moving again. Yeah, we'll see if they can do it here. Looking to throw again on second down. Watson looking sideline incomplete. Even the greats in this game, and, and he certainly qualifies as one of them. They're going to have trouble if they continue to throw into double coverage. He better be careful. Throwing into too much double coverage might have a couple of them picked off. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. And the Steeler pressure too much here. He's going to go down. Stefan to it with a big time sack on third down. It's a loss of seven. On fourth down, here's Brian Anger now to kick this one away. Only two punts for him last week in the loss as he gets this one away. And he'll take it just outside the 40. It'll be a 40 yard punt, eight on the return. And that will come the offense as they take over. The Steeler offense here about ready for their next drive. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? Got a man, it's caught inside the 10. And he'll be down deep into Houston territory. It's a big play there for the Steelers. 42 yards. The chain gang hustling to catch up. Here's first and goal from just inside the 10. They'll look to throw here. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And the Steelers are going to be looking at first and goal as they move this down to the four-yard line. How about the first quarter he's putting together out wide? Pretty impressive. I think that he likes the fact that we're playing line. this as a day game. You know, some guys, they respond better in the evenings. For some reason, it builds up for this guy day game and he is off and running you're exactly right 100 might be conservative with the start that he's had here in the first he, quarter. yeah by the numbers he's on pace for 200 plus right now second and goal from inside the five here's snell and yeah, he's in touchdown pittsburgh benny snell his 11th touchdown of the year and the steelers they broaden their lead he had the option to hand that football off. I think it's safe to say that he made the right decision. That was a heck of a run. It certainly was. And when you mentioned the option, most people think the quarterback's not going to keep the ball. You know, in the NFL, that's usually not the recipe for being around too long. So when you do keep it, it often surprises the heck out of a defense. Now this will make it into the end zone. And only able to get this to the 19, so probably should have opted for the touchback. At their own 19-yard line. The Texans offense ready to go here for their next drive. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? 
The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's not, He's not a team anymore. I just cut him, all right? <laughs> so you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this drive. Uh, poor punter. Yeah, he, it, it wasn't his fault. But, so, hey, listen, there's some guys, there's got to be casualties at times. We're trying to win a game. Trying to get it to Adams, but it's intercepted. It's Desmond Trufon, and he's able to get it back to right around the 27. So more problems here in this first quarter. Already two scores down, and here they give away the football. And if I'm the head coach, I think it's time to start lighting a fire under some of these guys. Now, you have to do it within your personality. They can't perceive it as fake, but I'd go get after some guys because they don't look ready to play to me. They look flat, uninspired. It's time to get moving. The throwing here to start the drive as they connect left side. And he's going to take it in for a Steeler touchdown. Now, first quarter, and this lead is already getting into dangerous territory. They better be careful on the other sideline. Yeah, it feels a little bit more like a basketball game where one team is pressing and that team can't get the ball over half court. I mean, it's stealing it, it's scoring it, layups, the whole deal. That's what it feels like right now. They are all over them. Now this will make it into the end zone. The Texans take over first and 10 at their own 21-yard line. Houston's offense already at the line, set to get going. And last time, one play interception. So this offense, they should be fresh. <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. And I can't wait to see what they decide to do with play calling because a one-play drive where you throw an interception, a lot of people think the very next time out, run the football, don't give them a chance. Maybe play action? I think maybe you go play action, show your quarterback, get a little confidence in him, and let him fling another one. Now a play fake, and it's Watson. He'll buy some time right. And he finds a man with a crossing round. And they'll get it all the way up about five yards shy of midfield. A gain there of 21 yards. That's the reason he We are in for a good one as we're through one on EA Sports. 28, Texan 7. From the shotgun now, here's an inside heel. And he'll be brought down at the 50 after a gain of about five. That's a really good gain right there. They pick up five yards halfway to a first down. The only problem now in the huddle, everyone's going to want to touch the football. It'll be a lot of chattering now because they've seen that they can move the line of scrimmage. The second down attempt there, knocked down as it leaves the quarterback's hand, and it's incomplete. Some of the fans here don't seem too happy about what we've seen in this first half. No, not at all, and I understand why they've looked lethargic, out of sync, and it shows on the scoreboard. Wide open receiver complete. And he is going to have a Texans first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. A second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. Time to make adjustments. They better find a way to get it done series to series. I don't know if they need to sub some guys out, bring in extra people, maybe change what they're doing on the defensive side of the ball. But right now, they're running the ball very well right at them and right up the middle. He's going to go up top for the end zone. And oh, it'll be intercepted. 
Picked up by Minka Fitzpatrick. And a great return as they're finally able to take him down. Well, that's three picks he's now thrown in this game. And I know this, the holiday season, because well, here we are in December. Right, it is the season of giving. Maybe for his own sake, after the game, he may have to announce that he's donating certain amounts to charity for each interception that he threw. He'll rifle this one deep right side. And this will be incomplete. Physical play on the football there, and it's second down. And I think they'd be well served to take that type of a physical approach against him the rest of the game. He's had his way so far, but on that last one, that worked quite well for the defense. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. They'll run with Snell. And he goes across the 20 to the 22. That'll leave them with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. I know the toss play begins with the guy taking the snap and turn around and tossing it to the runner. But where the real intrigue is, can they seal the edge, whether it's an offensive tackle or a tight end in the direction they want to run the football? If they do that, that's the result that you get, that type of a gain. If they don't, oftentimes it's not a very successful play. And he's got daylight. It's a foot race. And into the end zone. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Benny Snell, 78 yards. And the Steelers are going to add on to their lead. And he's been a busy man. Five for five now as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. Morstead out now following the touchdown to kick. Fair catch made at the 25-yard line. The Texans take over first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. The Texans offense ready to go here for their next drive. And in enemy territory last time through the interception. We'll see what they do on this drive. Can't wait to see how it alters what they decide to do in play calling. Do they continue to throw the ball? Do they want to lean more? the running game. It'll be an interesting sequence of plays that they've got coming up. Does it often affect the play calling with the interception? How much does that change what you do? I think it does depending on why the interception was thrown. Sometimes it's just a matter of the defense made a great play so you continue to come back. But if it's on you, if the offense just doesn't have the confidence, if they're a little bit shaky, maybe try and take the pressure off and run the ball a little bit. And the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. It'll be a loss of a couple on the play. So now third down coming up. Third and seven. From the gun, here's Watson. And they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. Great way to convert on third down there. 21 yards the play. of play action it's Watson toward the center of the field but it's incomplete Devontae Adams the intended receiver but it's going to be second down second and ten throwing again is Watson and he'll look for Adams again and this time he's got it and they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers 37. Texans passing game in rhythm right now picking up another first operating out of Steeler territory now here's first and 10 at the 37 yard line Again, it's Watson. And his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. The safety Terrell Edmonds picks it. We haven't even escaped the first half, and he's already thrown four picks. And Brandon, back in the good old days, probably back before you were born, if your starter threw four in the first half, 
he might throw eight or more for the game because they weren't going to pull him out. But nowadays, the patience level isn't quite there. He's going to have to make some real adjustments, or the backup may see some time. They'll come out throwing here on first down. Quick hitter here. It's complete. The seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs as we just saw there. Working with a second and three. Now a throw here, hold in. And he'll be a couple yards shy of the red zone here at the 22-yard line. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. First down, Pittsburgh. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. Forced out to his left. And his throw's going to be incomplete. They certainly did a nice job improvising there, extending the play, hoping someone would come open downfield, but they never did. So after the incompletion, second and 10 from the 22. A run for Snell. And he'll take it down here just shy of the 15 at the 16-yard line. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. Yeah, another good run there. He's been such a big part of their success here this afternoon. And that last carry, it puts him over 100 yards now for the day. The Texans here on third down, putting an extra defender in the secondary. Here's Snell on third down. And he will be very close to a first down, but I see the closed fist of the referee, and that means fourth down. Call it a four-yard pickup, but it leaves him a few inches short here on fourth down. So on is Matt Prater now to try a field goal here. Prater's kick is good. And they're sitting pretty now as the lead grows even further. So they've put together a good little drive there, but ultimately stalling out in the red zone. Yeah, I know a lot of people look at it as a little bit of a negative. They didn't get six points out of it, right? Didn't get the touchdown. But that's actually okay. They got three points. It will give their defense a little bit of rest, let them settle down over there. So all in all to me, that's a good drive. Taken in the end zone. And this will not be returned. It'll come out to the 25. At their own 25-yard line. Houston's offense already at the line, set to get going. And the interception last time on the opponent's side of the field, certainly not what they wanted. Put it mildly, that is so frustrating because that signifies there's a drive going on. You're in good spot, great place to run some of your best offense. Instead, they turn the ball over. Yeah, turn the ball over last time. See if they can avoid doing it here. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. They're on the tackle. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. At the 25-yard line. Bring it. A shotgun snap for Watson. This one into the hands of the running back, Balage. And he's upended at the 33, following a good pickup of eight. That'll leave him with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. They had the catch on second down, but it didn't help at all. And now they're looking at third down here. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. A reminder, once we hit halftime, as we do all season, we'll send it down to Jonathan Coachman in Orlando. He'll have all the stats and scores from games in progress around the NFL. The best multitasker in the business, the coach. It was Desmond Trufant right there, step for step in coverage. Here's Brian Anger now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. This is taken at the 23. They call that a punt of 38 yards officially. And the Steelers will go on offense here, first and 10. The Steeler offense here about ready for their next drive. They've had a very solid first half, and as we near the end of that first half, they're just looking for a little more on top. Under pressure, and the Texans able to get in there for the sack. 
Houston just gave up a sack there, and if I'm not mistaken, they gave up four last week, didn't they? Yes. And, and just looking really porous, aren't they? They really are, and I'm wondering if they're going to have to start thinking about keeping the tight end in, maybe a back, someone to help assist, because right now, the quarterback's been getting hit a lot in the last couple of games. Protection certainly going to need to be a bit better here on second and 16. Looking for Johnson, and it's intercepted. Picked by Emmanuel Mosley, and his guys will take over at the 30-yard line. Unfortunately for him, if last week was any indication, we knew a pick was coming at some point. Last week, it was interception after interception, and here we go again. We actually quit counting last <laughs> week at a certain point because I thought I was going to run out of fingers, right? Because I'm not all that skilled as a mathematician. But you're right. It felt like a matter of time. And you got to think the guys on defense, they couldn't wait for this opportunity after what they saw on tape. A fresh set of downs on a gain of 13 there for the Texans. Now the Texans will use one of their two remaining timeouts as they'll stop it with exactly a minute to go before halftime. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. Operating from the gun, Watson. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag route on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. Back of the end zone. Could he get his feet down? No, it's incomplete. That was a touchdown if he could have hung on. Instead, it was a well-timed collision to jar that one free. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. From the gun, Watson. And a quick throw here, that's complete. Now the Steelers use the first of their three timeouts. As the clock stops here with 46 seconds remaining in the first half. Here's Dustin Hopkins now to try the field goal. Hopkins on for the field goal. A 31-yard attempt. And the 10-year bet knocks it through the goalpost. And now they'll just need four touchdowns as the deficit is now 28. So a good kick there to polish off the drive with three points. Yeah, coaches always talk about finishing a drive with a kick. Two of them give you points, either an extra point or in this case, a field goal. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. 23-yard line. The Steeler offense here about ready for their next drive. You've got under a minute to go here until halftime. you got the good size lead. No need to do anything crazy. No, there really is no need. He's got a man complete. And into the end zone. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. A big play there. 77 yards. As his guys continue to put this one out of reach. And the route is on here in this first half. Makes the score, Steelers 45. Texans Morstead out now following the touchdown to kick. Fielded in the end zone. The Texans take over first and 10 at their own 16-yard line. The Texans offense ready to go here for their next drive. And the ball backed way up. So thinking with this amount of time on the clock, probably just sit on it and we'll see these two teams go to the lockers. Yeah, I don't think you want to overthink it in this situation. Either side of the ball. Just go ahead and finish up the half and get on out and talk about it. The 34-yard line. So we've reached halftime here in what is quickly turning into quite a rout. As we'll get you over to Orlando, where standing by is Jonathan Coachman. He has our EA Sports halftime report. 
Dustin Hopkins set to kick off. So time for the second half as the Steelers have the lead and they will also be receiving the football here to start the third quarter. Taken about seven yards deep. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. At their own 23-yard line. The Steeler offense here about ready for their next drive. And last time the formula was pretty simple. One play drive, long pass. That Maybe they just want to do that again, right? And that's exactly how you want to draw things up. Whether it's on your grease board, right, in your playbook. One play drive is exactly what you want on offense. What they have to be careful of is not having a letdown. It was really easy last time. They can't expect that going forward. And we'll see if it's that easy here. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. They're going to run again with Snell. And he'll work his way across the 30 to the 32. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. So much of the game today, we're looking for hybrid players, guys who can do a combination of jobs. And anyone who plays a strong safety position now more than ever is a hybrid type player. Half defensive back that covers passes and half linebacker that makes tackles. We just saw the linebacker make that play. Try to run for it with Snell. And he's able to get it to the 33. Good enough for a first down. It'll be a pickup of only a yard. And it'll move the chains. And the Steeler first down. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. And he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom, quick, 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 and what a terrific play, holding them to no gain. Now left side on the swing pass. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. In order for a screen pass to break big, a lot of things have to come together and be well executed. But all it takes is one small thing to go wrong and keep it from being a big game. They're going option play on third down. A quick toss out right. And that play is blown up, losing yardage back at the 35. A loss of a yard, and it brings up fourth. Here's Thomas Morstead now. And the way this offense has moved the ball, he hasn't been needed till here in the third. It'll be a 39-yard punt, no return. And the Texans will take over with a first and ten. Houston's offense already at the line, set to get going. They've got to dig down deep. I mean, they need something right now, really anything to cling on to. This offense has struggled. Partner, join me in a walk to their locker room at the half, okay? Because I think what we would have seen is an offensive coordinator and his, and his assistant coaches getting together with all their positions, then coming together as a group, going over adjustments, and then the head coach coming in and just screaming, wake up. Yeah. Let's get moving, guys. I'm kind of glad we weren't in there. Time, actually. I mean, you think you might have turned it on us, too? Yeah, but right now, whatever was said hasn't been working. And boy, that one drops incomplete, but if he was hit a fraction sooner, it may have been a fumble. But the passing windows are just not there, and that's just another example of how great this defense has been all game long. And that's exactly what a top-10 defense can do. They can really change the game tempo and frustrate you as you try to execute offensively. They come up to the line now facing a third and ten after the incompletion. Operating from the gun, Watson looking deep for Adams, and that's caught inside the 30. And now they are knocking on the door inside Pittsburgh's 10. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. And at this stage, down in the second half, looks like they just wanted to find a way to get it in the hands of their playmaker, and they did. I think you're exactly right. I don't think the coordinator's looking at his play sheet and trying to figure out. And he's in. Touchdown, Houston. Kalen Balaj.
second touchdown of the game, number eight on the season. And the Texans are in for six. On is Hopkins now for the extra point. And that'll cut the lead down to 28. Makes the score, Steelers 45. Texans Following the touchdown, 17. Dustin Hopkins will kick it away. Takes this about five yards deep. And ultimately, he stopped right where he would have been if he had simply gone down to a knee at the 25. The Steeler offense here about ready for their next drive. Still comfortably on top, third quarter, as they start things here with a first and ten. And he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. He would well, praise has to go to the guys in the offensive line because they've had a very nice, productive day running the football. How about that poor defensive line? They've been knocked around the entire game, and while they slowed them down on that run, can they continue to do so? Because they haven't had much success throughout this ball game. Second down, McFarland. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. 11 yards there, first down. Partner, if you want more carries, I think we saw how you get them. Showed that he's got the fresh legs, and he picked up the first down on that run. Don't just ask for him. Show him that you're supposed to get the football. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. They're going to look to throw. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. Call that a very strong gain of 24. Pittsburgh. Snell on the shotgun handoff. And tough sledding. He'll get maybe a yard. Stop short of the 35. The tackle made by Jesse. Well, partner, I don't think it's any secret that any running back wants to be able to see a hole open so that he can gallop through it. But in this case, he had to slow down. There was really no hole there. And he took a big hit in order to get that one yard. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. He'll look to throw. And that one got tipped, kind of threw everything off. It brings up third. That one doesn't find its target, but all in all, he's been much sharper this week. He was under 50% a week ago, and now he's up over 70%. But you know it's standard for quarterbacks and receivers get together for a little extra time each and every day in practice. I get the sense they got together for a lot of extra time this week to try and improve that passing percentage, and it's worked out quite well. So third down now. They need the 27-yard line for a first. Out of the gun. They'll look to throw. And that's knocked away and incomplete. That's a nice job there because you've got to play the ball, not the man winning coverage. That'll keep you away from a lot of needless penalties. And he's able to knock that one away. Matt Trader on for the field goal. A 53-yard attempt. And his kick is absolutely perfect. And they're well on their way now as the lead grows even larger. These kickers now, it's like we take them for granted. Kicks like that used to be such a big deal, and now you just expect them to make it. Yeah, you're exactly right, and we shouldn't take them for granted. But I have a theory about it. You want to hear it? Yep. They are more athletic now than ever before. Talk about kickers. Trace their backgrounds, trace their history. You'll find that they were big-time athletes all along, but their kicking was so prevalent that we made them specialists. Well, and now those 50-plus yarders seem easy for some reason. The Texans offense ready to go here for their next drive. I guess they have to feel a little gratified to at least get on the board last time, but still work to do. No doubt about it. I wonder now if they're going to try to increase the urgency a little bit, maybe pump up the pace, maybe go two-minute. Who knows? Let's we'll see what they decide to do. 
The drive will commence with a run by Milan. And he'll push forward for about four up to the 23. I feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry. He wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. Now a second down and six. Again, it's Balage. And they'll take him down at the 31-yard line. That what a first down pickup of eight. That was a good, nice, crisp run for a first down. I wonder if the defense might have been loosened up a little bit, maybe anticipating a pass instead of the run that they got. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. From the gun, Watson. The left side throw complete to Adams. And he'll have it past midfield almost to the 40 before being taken down. At the 40, that'll be marked as a 27 yard pickup. Steeler territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 42 yard line. They'll run here with Balage. And he gets this down inside the 35 before going out of bounds. Give him nine on the carry that time, and they're set up with a second and one. It's a gain of nine. Brings up second and a yard. They'll stay on the ground. Balage again. And he'll get this pretty close to a first down as he's tackled at the Steelers' 27. Man, these guys may not win this ball game, but you certainly can't fault the effort of this man here today. He's been a real thorn in their sides all afternoon. And that last carry puts him over the 100-yard mark. And that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. With his size, he's a tough man to bring down, but they do a nice job there stopping his progress and not allowing him to get back to the line of scrimmage. That loss of three, a rare stumble on a promising drive. Here's second and 13. They'll try the air now with Watson. That'll be complete to Cook. Heck of a broken tackle and able to work this down near the 23. That was play number seven on this drive, and it got him seven yards. When you execute a drag or a crossing route really well and give them a chance to let it develop a little bit, you can gain some significant yardage hitting your tight end on that one. Seventh play of the drive upcoming here on third and six. Texans first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. That'll put him over 150 yards receiving now. Quite a ball game and a first down. Check, 
from the red zone now. Watson. He's got his man on the crossing route. And the Texans are going to be looking at first and goal as they move this down to the four-yard line. Back now in Houston. And this is a blowout so far as we get set for the fourth quarter. A very one-sided affair. Following the touchdown, Dustin Hopkins will kick it away. Now this will make it into the end zone. And he'll just take a seat, and the drive will begin at the 25 yard line. The Steeler offense here about ready for their next drive. And this one has gone pretty well to form. They've come in, had little problem thus far, and now they'll try to polish things off in the fourth. They'll run with Snell to begin the drive. And this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. Good gain there on first down. It keeps them in a running situation, probably. They did everything right on that play, didn't they? They got the leverage up front, good blocking. Nice hole for him. Ends up picking up nice yardage. Stays in bounds to keep the clock rolling. They are in charge of this scenario right now. They want to stay that way. And not in any rush offensively. Here's Snell yet again. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. Give them 14 on that one and a first down. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, he's the guy they've turned to. And it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage. On first down, McFarland. And he's going to bowl his way forward to the 48. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive gain. Just keep that clock ticking. Coming up on a second and six. Again, McFarland. And he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. 12 yards there and a first down. A big hole there. How about him handling the point of attack? Just positioning himself so that run could go right off of his backside and deep into the secondary. So a first and 10 now in Houston territory, right at the 40. First down, McFarland. They'll wind up getting four down to the 36. This drive is pretty clear. Almost feels like old school fundamentals, doesn't it? Want to impose their will on the defense. What's that, five straight runs? Yeah, five straight carries to start this drive. And like you said, the way it's working, they may just stick with it. Second down, it's Snell. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. 
he was brought no gain on the play there, so they're left with a third down and six. Brings up third down. Linebackers in history, they all have that ability to innately sense where a play is going, sometimes even before the ball snapped, and they're there and end up making the play. And his kick is good. He got every bit of that one as it's good from 56 yards out. So he remains perfect, three for three in the field goal department. And it's so important for any offense to have an ace like him up their sleeve, isn't it? Because now, you know what his range is, and as soon as your offense gets there, you're pretty much counting on three points going up on the board. At their own 25-yard line. Houston's offense already at the line, set to get going. And you see a lot of frustrated faces as they are inching closer to a fourth straight loss. And here's a throw that's taken in by the tight end, Cook. And he gets this up just shy of the 30 to the 29 before he's out of bounds. They'll contain him to just four. Second down. Second and six. They run it with Balazs. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. A gain of 13. It's a first down. Probably wishing that they could have had a few runs like that earlier in the game now facing this deficit in the fourth. Hard to criticize a run of that magnitude, but they really need those types of runs to go the distance and need bigger plays to try and get back into this one. Now Milaj. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and ten coming up. That time they're able to bottle him up, but he's having a really nice game. I agree with that. Let's just go big picture, right? Every back that's in the Hall of Fame had carries where they didn't gain yardage or they lost yardage, but you stick with them, don't you? When they're having a good game, keep feeding them. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. It'll go as a loss of a yard, so now they deal with third and 11. Throwing on third down, Watson. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. And he'll take this to the 47, but no further. As they get him down well short of the line to gain. Five yards, not enough. And it'll be fourth down. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. They will indeed snap it to Watson. And this is incomplete. Devin Bush, the linebacker, was the one there in pass coverage. Uh, being just short of midfield, they decide to take a crack at it on fourth down. They don't come through. Sometimes it's just showing confidence in your defense. You know that they're good, and they'll take care of you. A lot of coaches during the week will announce to their team, we're going to be aggressive, guys. We're going to go for it. Hey, defense, you got me? A little bit of a challenge to them to see if they'll pick up the rest of the team. We'll see how they respond now. A gain of four. And result of that one, a nice four-yard gain. So you can use that to set up your play-action game, or you can come right back and continue to run the football because... As an offensive play caller, you're on schedule and feel pretty good about your next couple of calls. And Two yards on the carry there, and it's going to lead him to third down. Taken down at the 41. A two-yard gain on the play. And it's third down. 
And it looks like this will be the last play before the two-minute warning. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. Go! Bring it, bring it, guys. Fight 51. Mike 50. Man the strength. Man the strength. On third down. Snell. And he got blown up. Losing yardage on the play back at the 44. Not at all what they envisioned on third down. Three yards in the wrong direction. Here's Thomas Morstead now. As he'll punt it away for the second time. And here's a very low line drive, almost whiffed on it. Officially just 27 yards there on the punt. And the Texans are going to have the football with a first and 10 deep in their own territory. The Texans offense ready to go here for their next drive. We certainly had a sense coming in here that these guys were in for a tough one on the road. That has been how this ball game has played out. They trail big as we continue on now here in this fourth quarter. Now a throw right side taken in here to start this drive. Nice way to start the drive. A gain of 12 and a first down. Well, this game was decided a while ago, and that completion there is going to artificially inflate his passing numbers. So right now, the only one really applauding probably his agent as he thinks about angling for a new contract. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. We've seen this quite a few times in this game. Offensive line unable to keep leverage, unable to keep people away, facing a lot of pressure. Fortunate, fortunate just to get rid of it. One of the reasons they're down is that inability, though, to stop the pressure. We saw another example of it there. Six man. Check curls, check curls, check curls. 52, Mike 52. It's been a long day for you. SOS, SOS, SOS. SOS, SOS, SOS. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. And nowhere for him to go again. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage. That's him. Back to back stops, make it third and ten. the gun Watson and my goodness another interception picked up by Mika Fitzpatrick yet another interception and I just had to double check my math but it is now eight between last week and this week well I just used a calculator I didn't worry about double checking it but the thing that always throws me when you see quarterbacks in this type of a bad spot they're trying to figure out what they can do to change it, and sometimes they try too hard, and they never get out of it. And that's where he is right now. He's just locked in in a really bad way. And they take a knee. So time to start going in the other direction as they come up now third and long. It's one thing to win. 